Chancellor, I have the honour to present the degree of the Doctor of Honoris Causa. If there are certain traits for our graduates to possess, then perhaps they include having a positive attitude, relentless passion, and an undying work ethic, since those are the traits that eventually enabled John Brink to build a sawmill when he arrived in Canada at the, at, in 1965 at the age of 24 from Holland with one suitcase, the clothing on his back, and $25.47 in his pocket. He also had a dream that he'd never give up on, a dream that established him as a forest industry pioneer as he built a lumber remanufacturing and finger jointing plant from scratch. His relentless pursuit of his dream has allowed him to establish the lar largest secondary wood manufacturing company in Canada and the 13th largest forest company in BC. As the chief executive officer of Brink Forest Products, he is the longest serving director of the Council of Forest Industries, which represents the BC forest industry. Brink is the founding chair of the Woodworks Initiative, helping to promote the use of wood structures across British Columbia and North America. In addition, he is the founding president of the BC Council of Value Added Wood Processors, which had eight associations across British Columbia and boasted 800 members. Mr. Brink is also a philanthropist, supporting hundreds of charities and non-profit organization in Prince George and around the world. He is also known for advocating animal welfare, supporting the SPCA, and Prince George's, Prince George's Humane Society. As an outstanding industry leader and philanthropist, I have the honor to present the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa to Mr. John A. Brink. by virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor. I admit you, John A. Brink, with the degree of Doctorate of Laws, Honoris Causa. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you the new alumnus, Dr. John A. Brink. Thank you very much. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, members of the Senate, faculty members, students, family members, and friends. I'm deeply humbled to be recognized today in receiving the honorary doctors of law degree. It is more than 30 years ago that the dream of a Northern University became recognized as a difficult but achievable goal. 
16,000 people joined in an effort to convince the politicians to fund the goal of a northern university. The Interior University Society members were relentless in their pursuit of the goal. In July of 1990, the government made the commitment to fund this amazing university. Today, as we look around us, at this amazing facility, the dream was realized. UNBC is not only a reality, but now nearly 30 years later, it is recognized as the best small university in Canada. And to all the students graduating and now starting a new phase in their lives and pursuing their dreams, careers, maybe entrepreneurship, you and I will always look back at today as we are 2019 graduates of UNBC and the alumni of the best university in Canada. I want to share with you a story today about the power of dreams where the impossible becomes possible. And along the way, the unexplained happens. It was in Northern Holland at the early stages of the Second World War. A mother was trying to keep her three children, all less than three years old, fed and saved from the ravages of war. Her husband was a soldier in the Dutch army, drafted to the war zone. The last she heard of him was that he was seen in Rotterdam just before the bombing of that city. She would not know until five years later if he had survived. The youngest boy, Jan, was born in 1940 at the start of the Second World War. He would remember the most difficult stages of the war for the rest of his life. The fear of being abandoned, death being bombed, the hunger winter with no food, small rooms, no heat, the sound of hundreds of heavy bombers overhead looking for targets in Germany. The Canadian Army liberated his village on April the 12th, 1945. Jan, then five, remembered the liberation well. There was fighting between the opposing soldiers. Some would die. A bridge in front of his house would be blown up by the Germans to slow down the liberating forces. Behind Jan's house was a schoolyard, not much further away than the end of the stage. A small section of the Canadian Army Red Cross was stationed there. The Canadian soldiers would feed the kids of the neighborhood every morning with bread and butter and cheese, and the bread and the cheese, or the butter and the cheese would be bigger than the bread. And although they did not speak the same language, they did. The liberation of the Canadian soldiers made such an impression on Jan that he knew from then forward, when he grew up, he wanted to go to the land of his heroes, Canada. A dream was born. Jan's dad survived the war and returned to the family after five years underground. He returned to his job at a lumber mill and would become the manager of that mill. Jan's academic pursuit was not stellar. Jan would prefer to work with his hands. He had challenges. He was sent to an evening vocational training and got a job at 15 years old, working in a furniture factory as an apprentice furniture maker. For Jan, the dream of going to Canada remained, and it would be realized in 1965 when he left Holland with $150.
to go to British Columbia and pursue the dream of building a lumber mill. When arriving in Vancouver, he was told in 1965, he was told to go to Prince George, that's where they are building lumber mills, and the jobs are there, so he did. Arriving in Prince George by Greyhound, Jan had precisely $25.47. He counted it at least twice in his pocket. A suitcase with books, one set of clothes. He did not speak the language, he did not know a soul, and he had no job, but he had a dream. To build his own lumber mill. Jan started his first job as a cleanup man, gradually climbing the ladder one step at a time. The dream of building his own mill was very much alive. What happened to Jan? As you already probably figured, Jan became John, and John is me. I learned the language, and now today, I'm the owner and founder of a number of companies, I think it's about eight or so, including a lumber mill. We employ nearly 400 people. A testament to the students that even under the most difficult of circumstances, against all odds and staying the course, dreams will become reality. My message today to all graduates that in spite of all the adversity, in my case, failing grade three, nobody fails grade three, I did, and failing grade seven three times, that in spite of suffering the effects of PTSD from five years of war, and discovering later in life that I'm having the ultimate case of ADHD, and considered at a young age mentally challenged, the dream of going to Canada and building a lumber mill remained. Oh, and, and by the way, as I mentioned in my opening, the unexplained you may encounter. And I'm a realist, but this is what happened. I was invited for dinner to the house of a manager of a place where I worked in the early stages in the first year that I was here. I was nervous because I couldn't quite speak the language. Well, we talked about Holland, the war. Then he told me he was a soldier in the Canadian Army. He was part of the forces that liberated Northern Holland, where I live. In fact, he was the captain in the Red Cross section, which was located in the schoolyard, right there, behind the house. His name was Captain Jerry Wilmot. Taking it one step further, today our main operations are in Prince George, in the CNR side, close to the Northern Chaco. On that particular side where Brink Forest Products is located today, up to 1964, was a mill located called Norman M. Smith. Norman M. Smith was an owned and operated by, up until 1964, by our Canadian liberator, Captain Jerry Wilmot. Coincidence? Maybe. So, in closing to the graduate students, as I stand here before you, you are at the beginning of your careers. Where I'm at nearly 80, starting at the last quarter of mine, maybe slightly optimistic, <laughs> I say to you, feel the hunger and follow your dreams. I still today follow my dreams. I hope to leave you with these thoughts, which are pillars in my life. Maintain a positive attitude. Attitude is critical. Avoid the negative. Find your passion in what you do as a career in all the things you do. Work ethic. Work harder in all things you do and never, 
never give up. That's your dream and success will follow you as it did for me. I want to thank UNBC for the day bestowing on me this honor. To the graduates, if things get tough along the way and if you question yourself, if you have what it takes, think back to the five-year-old whose, whose dream is towards he got from the Canadian soul and against all odds, he stayed the course and succeeded. Thank you very much. I need a moment for a deep breath. My goodness. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you.